everybody and welcome to this video series about the harp. My name is Grania and I'm a harpist and a harp teacher and over the next three videos I am going to be talking to you about the harp, its history and its role in the current A-level music syllabus. Um, so in this first episode um, I'm going to introduce you to the harp and how it works. So what I have here with me today are the two kinds of harp that I play, um, the concert harp and the Irish harp. Um, they are the two most commonly played harps in the world today. There are many many different kinds of harps being played all over the world and um, far more than I'd ever be able to talk to you about in this series of videos. Um, so we're going to focus on these two and in the next episode we might touch on some of the others. So this is a concert harp which is mainly used for playing classical music. It has a range of about six and a half octaves and has 47 strings. So the strings are mostly made of gut and in the bass they are steel. Um, it's tuned diatonically um, like the white keys of a piano. The moment I have it set up in C major. Um, so the red strings are C's and the black strings are F's and in between we have C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So it's just just like the white keys of a piano. Now, um, because we don't have black keys that we can use as a reference point, like the piano, the the coloured guide helps us find our way throughout the harp. Because if you imagine a piano without the black keys, um, it would be very very difficult to find where you were, um, and that would yeah, the on the harp it would be just really difficult, and more so than it already is. And to get our sharps and flats, we have this mechanism. On the neck of the harp and it is made up of little discs with metal forks on them and these are operated by foot pedals at the base of the harp. They control rods and cables that run up through the column of the harp and right under the neck and they whenever we move the pedals um, that will move these discs and those discs then change the pitch of the strings. So we have seven pedals we have a pedal for every note of the scale. So on the left hand side of the harp we have B, C and D and on the right hand side we have E, F, G and A. Now, for example um, if I took this D string I've currently got it set in the natural position which is the middle notch and if I lift it into the top notch it will become D flat. If I move it back down natural again and then if I move it into the bottom slot it will be D sharp. Now this will control um, all of the D's throughout the harp so, so each pedal will control all of its note through the range of the harp um, which means on each string we actually have access to three different pitches. The bottom two strings don't have discs and the very top um, G at the top of the harp also doesn't have a disc so if we have a piece that uses these notes and um, we have to tune them to what we need before the start of the piece and um, they're obviously at the extreme of the range so they don't crop up that often so it's not too much of an issue and um, now whenever we're playing pieces in the harp we have to change these pedals in the middle of a piece and obviously we only have two feet and seven pedals and um, so whilst the harp is capable of a lot of um, chromatic playing, some very very um, fast um, chromatic changes just aren't possible. A technique used quite a lot on the harp um, is the glissando. So at the moment um, that's just a C major glissando. Um, so to make it more interesting we can use the pedals to set up specific scales or chords. Um, so what we can do is actually um, we can make two strings produce the same note. So if I make this D a D flat and the C a C sharp. They're now the same note. So using that I can create a whole tone scale um, for glissando. Um, that's one that's used quite a lot um, in composers writing um, for the harp. Um, another technique um, that's used quite frequently is the harmonic. Um, so a harmonic um, on any string instrument is where we shorten the string um, and produce an overtone. Um, which creates a higher pitch. So on the harp we 
um, stop the string um, halfway using this part of our hand um, and pluck it with our thumb. Um, for example, and it produces a more bell-like tone, so this will give us um, a note higher than the normal playing. So here's the string an octave higher, and that's a harmonic. Sounds more like more like a bell. Um, so we can actually get two at once on our left hand and one on our right. So we could have um, up to three at once. So the harp is also used quite a lot in contemporary music and through that we have a lot of extended techniques that we can use. Um, one for example is a pedal buzz um, which would be quite dramatic sounding. Um, we can also have a pedal slide, which is just where we can change the note of the string whilst, whilst it's ringing. Um, we can also do this, um, we can do a pitch bend by reaching up um, to the neck of the harp and bending the string. Um, we can also do this with the tuning key um, by and um, some composers um, actually um, ask us to tune the harp um, in different uh, microtonal tunings um, for certain pieces. Um, Takanitsu does it quite a lot um, and it's not too much of a problem because we're used to spending a lot of time tuning anyway. Um, so that's another thing that gets done um, occasionally. Um, we also have techniques called xylophone sounds which is where we put our fingers on the soundboard and then pluck the strings as normal. Produces um, a much drier sound. Um, I know it doesn't sound exactly like a xylophone, but if you didn't have one, um, it's a decent substitute. Um, we also have a Bartok piss, which is when we pluck the string and immediately slap the soundboard. Um, um, another thing that we use quite a lot is called Prejo de Tabla, which is when we play the strings much lower. Um, usually we play about halfway up. And if we play lower, it will sound drier again. A bit more like the tone of a guitar. Um, so there are loads of possibilities and different sound worlds that you can achieve on the harp. Um, it's a great instrument. Um, you can do a lot of a lot of different things. Um, so that is a brief overview of the concert harp. So I'm just going to move on and tell you a little bit about the Irish harp now. So this is my lever harp and we call it a lever harp because it has levers to operate um, changing pitches of the strings rather than the pedals that we have on the concert harp. So the levers um, can change the pitch of the string um, by one semitone as opposed to the two semitones on a concert harp. So each string um, has one of these levers and um, because we can only tune them one, well we can only change them by one semitone um, each, we tune the harp in E flat major so that we can get some keys with flats in them and also some keys with sharps in them. So whenever we have all the levers down, it um, is in the E flat major. And if we were to put all the levers up, we would be in E major. So it's, um, it's kind of a best of both worlds scenario. Obviously it means um, we can't get all keys, but Say we wanted to play something in B major and we needed A sharp, so we would just tune the harp differently and then we'd be good to go. So the levers, um, because we have to change them with our left hand, sometimes whilst we're playing, we don't have access to quite the same repertoire as the concert harp. This particular harp I have is an Irish made harp. It was made by Tim O'Carroll in Killarney and it is designed specifically for playing Irish music. So the strings are made with fluorocarbon and it's strung with a much lighter tension than the concert harp which means um, it allows us to play the fast um, traditional dance tunes that we wouldn't be able to play quite so well on the concert harp. It has, so it has fluorocarbon strings at the top and then it has metal strings at the bottom just, just like the concert harp. Um, so this harp has 34 strings, it would be the standard amount of strings and in the same way the, the seeds are still red and the blacks are still left so 
it's, it's similar to play in, in that respect though because the stringing tension is very different it requires um, a bit of a different technique to the concert harp. The concert harp requires a huge amount of force to play and get sound out of it um, whereas this harp um, because it's a little bit more delicate you play it a little bit more lightly. If I were to play it with the same force that I play on the concert harp it would just it would sound very harsh and a bit horrible. Um, so they really are two very different instruments um, taking entirely different techniques to learn. Um, I'd say I love them both equally for different things. I started off on the Irish harp um, before learning the concert harp um, and I did have to completely relearn a different technique for playing this harp and of course the pedals um, they add another um, dimension as well um, but at the same time they're they're not dissimilar to each other and they're they're both brilliant instruments in their own right um, so that's um, a brief overview of both of those and next week we're going to be going a bit further back and talking about the history of the harp and how it um, came to reach its modern form so please tune in again um, for the next episode and I will see you then <laughs>